Yo, what's up? It's good to describe doing anything for the boy Deep Back John. Another bang reaction, man. You already know the day is, man. The day is random Tuesday, number 69. Today we have Outflank, Outplay, Outbeat. Van Jones has a theory for why Harris lost. Okay, so this is obviously about the uh, election again. Um, obviously not a topic that I like talking about very much because I'm not really into politics, but I'm sure all of you are. Some of you are. This one was requested by Felipe Garcia. Appreciate it, man. So I'm sure you was pretty tapped in the uh, election and uh, why things went the way they went. Um, so yeah, I, I'm guessing somebody's coming up here to, to, to kind of like break down and why certain people lost or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, on why hair is lost. So it's nine minutes. I'm damn sure not watching the whole video. Might watch like four or five minutes of it. You know, kind of script through or whatever. But we're going to have a tool. I'm going to leave the original video link description down below. Don't y'all want to check it on your own time. As always, like, comment, subscribe, join the D squad if you haven't already, man. Um, I appreciate all the love. And everybody tuning in to me each and every week. But now, let's hop to it, man. Um, all right, everyone's here with me. Lulu Garcia and Navarro, can I start with you? I know you just spoke to the former House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, for your podcast, uh, breaking her silence on what happened here. She was, of course, instrumental in pushing Biden to step aside, right? I mean, let's be clear about that. So what's she saying now? Well, um, without giving too much away, she talked about the fact that this was a heartbreaking loss. She used that word. Mm -hmm. She also said that she has spoken to the vice president and that it was a very emotional conversation, that they're friends, and that that conversation was difficult for both of them. Um, mm -hmm. We had a very wide-ranging and lengthy conversation about what happened, uh, how she sees the path forward, and what her own plans are, um, and, you know, that will come out soon, but, you know, it is honestly a very, very difficult moment um, for the former Speaker of the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Van. Hey, y'all, I seen something on TikTok earlier where Trump was talking about he's taking off taxes for overtime basically like if you work overtime you ain't gonna get taxed or tell me how y'all feel about that you know what i'm saying like it should should more be done or should is that good enough for y'all because you know he's now president again and he's now talking about changes he wants to make and stuff of that nature some people like it some people wish that he's doing more that you know some people saying he needs to take taxes off bonuses or whatever you know what i'm saying so y'all let me know how y'all feel about that um about that statement right there These mushrooms make you feel better. They increase focus and energy while keeping you calm and stress-free. So, Nancy Pelosi using the word heartbreaking in her conversation with <clears throat> Lulu. Carville talking about a dark tunnel. Blame is starting. Yep. And um, there needs to be discussion yeah. among Democrats. So... <laughs> well, look. We, we spent a billion dollars and elected Donald Trump. Uh, that's not a blame game. That's called accountability. <laughs> Um, yep. And the people at the top of the campaign, the top of the party, have a lot of people pissed off at them because there were people who were, had suggestions. There were people who were saying, why are we doing this? Why this? It was like, hey, we've got it. We've got it. We've got it. We've got this special magical computer formulation. We've tested every ad. Shut up and sit down and go back to work. And so people said, okay, well, I guess you're right. And then we got clobbered, clocked, knocked down, beat up, drugged down. And yep. so people are mad and they should be mad. And the people at the top are going to have to listen. There is a grassroots rebellion happening in this, in, in this party. And it's coming to knock on the door of the people who are in charge of the party. That's not blame game. That's accountability. Accountability. I mean, and you know, I know you're a billion dollars. A billion dollars. And I dollars believe they technically at, you know, blew a few hundred million of that in the recent weeks, Andrew Yang, and now ended up technically maybe in debt I, I, a little bit. Um, they did door knocking. They did traditional ads. But you heard what Van saying. They... They weren't listening to other ideas that people maybe like Van had. For instance. Yes. For instance. Well, I mean, th there should be accountability. And Joe Biden should not have run for a second term. There should have been a competitive primary in January. He should have dropped out in January and not July. And by the way, J.B. Prisker, Gavin Newsom, they should have challenged him in January. We all know that they had campaigns in waiting. But instead, everyone said, oh, Joe's going to be fine. Joe's going to be fine. He has a disastrous debate against Donald Trump. Then he drops out in July. And then everything is under the gun and in hurry up mode. The party lost a crucial... Well, I think Joe was the first one I seen do that, like, by that running or whatever. And they had to, like, basically, like... Get off, you know what I'm saying? Like basically quit, not like not quit, but yeah, step off the election. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I never seen that happen. You know, but he, I mean, he's he's pretty up there. He's pretty old, man. You know, so 
guess the VP had to step in, you know. I mean, I commend her for doing that. Like, even if, even just stepping, stepping up for, you know, the president. Um, soon to be president at the time, you know, Joe. But, yeah, that's the first time I'll ever seen that happen. Like, somebody have to step, having to step off the election campaign. Period where they could have introduced the next generation of leaders to the American people, vetted and chosen a ticket that could have taken the fight to Donald Trump instead of Joe Biden fumbling the ball to Kamala down the stretch. And, and Lulu, to this this whole conversation, is there any sense from people you're talking to of what role they think it played that there was a perception, certainly among some voters, that at least Kamala Harris had not been honest with voters about Joe Biden's true state. I mean, this kept coming up again and again. Now people are trying to figure out well, what happened. Is that something you hear? I mean, I think that one of the things that happened during this election is that when that disastrous debate with Joe Biden um, happened, I think there was a break um, in trust with um, the Democratic Party and the electorate. There was a feeling that there wasn't actually honesty about the condition of the president and that people had been perhaps shielding him from the voters. I mean, if you think about the fact that he really hadn't been sitting down for interviews, he hadn't been giving extended press conferences. And so I think that there is a, a real, you know, there are still questions about what exactly happened there and who knew what and when they knew it. Right. I mean, that is the real question. I mean, Van, I had done an interview with him a few weeks before that. I didn't know, you know, he was fine in that capacity, but you would imagine someone around him all the time, yeah. as many were, would have had a much different, perhaps, view. But, you know, it all came down to many, many things, right? But when you look at the actual votes, um, it wasn't as if t Trump suddenly surged in so many things. Yeah. It's that Democrats did worse. Monmouth went through just the blue states. Trump got an extra 280,000 votes this time versus last time. So he improved. Yeah. But that's not the story. Look at this full screen. Yeah. The, the, Harris lost 3,339,000. God damn. Bro, what the hell, bro? That shit crazy. 3 million, bro? Over 3 million. 404 votes. Yes. That's what stands out there. Well, you know, Bakari Seller said over and over again, it's either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump or the couch. And Bakari was always worried about the couch. People just not feeling inspired enough to go out and vote. He wasn't worried that people were going to not vote for Kamala and go vote for Trump. He was afraid they weren't going to vote at all. And here's how we got beat. We got beat because the Republicans and conservatives built a different media system that had to do with online, had to do with podcasts, had to do with, with streaming platforms, and they were spending their money there. We were laughing at them and knocking on doors in Philadelphia and Detroit. It's like, there's no Trump people. They're not dropping literature. They're not dropping, dropping, uh, right. knocking on doors. Ha, well, in ha, fact, ha. It, was, it was laughing like, oh, Elon Musk and Charlie Kirk yeah. with their packs we don't were, know what they're doing. We, they're were, making, we were making fun of Donald Trump for having thrown away his ground game and doing some weird stuff online. We thought that they were, were idiots. It turned out we were the idiots. We woke up in a body bag because while we were knocking on doors, they were making these phones into... 24 hour a day political weapons for themselves. And so we got outflanked, outplayed, outbeat by people who told us the whole time that they knew what they were doing. And people are mad. And Future, and, 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 uh, future Ford, all these different groups that vacuumed up all this money and told everybody to sit down and shut up are going to be in for an accountability session from the grassroots, and it is coming. I remember. <laughs> That's the last ad I'm going to allow. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, basically, how do y'all feel about even, like, just, just the whole conversation, basically? Like, I feel like what's, there's some valid points. I feel like, you know, none of this made sense at all, you know? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just something. The election was something, man. Um, uh, Harris fell short. Trump won again. You know, and some people is mad about that. Some people are even happy about that. Very controversial. And I think that's how the election usually goes, you know? Very, very controversial. Way more, way too controversial for me. But, um, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all got something from it at least, you know. Um, but yeah, we just gonna have to see what happens, man. When it comes to, you know, Trump being president again, you know, we just gonna have to see what happens. Um, that includes another video, Random Tuesday. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, same time next week. Any other questions, drop it in the comment section. I'm tired of just the same people commenting, man. No offense, Felipe or Brandy or Adrian Mesa. 
other people need to be commenting, man. I know I I, I be seeing these views. I'm like, yo, y'all be I, like, y'all be scared. Are y'all scared to speak your mind? You can tell me if you are. I keep telling y'all, y'all ain't got nothing to be scared of, man. This is this is an open-minded um, platform, you know. So y'all just need to start commenting more, you know what I'm saying? Telling, like, or just requesting, you know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all, a lot of y'all be um, commenting under my shorts, which is which is uh, dope, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, y'all make sure y'all comment, man. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. You know, don't be afraid, man, to do that. With that being said, um, I love y'all. Y'all stay safe. God bless, man. Deep is out, man. Peace.